Morning, how's everybody doing today? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. About to be down here Thursday morning. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. That's what I hope. Thursday morning. Just got out of bed. I went to bed pretty late. And uh, so, I slept actually kind of decent, I guess. Oddly enough. Oddly enough. So let me go ahead and get to the point here of this walk and talk. You know, like that bug attacking me. I got a bug attacking me every day. Bastard just wait out here for me. Look at it, it's attacking me still. You'll see it. <sighs> anyway. So my latest shorts that I uploaded of me doing concentration curls of me doing whatever else it was I did <sighs> I don't remember now <laughs> oh uh, my incline bench that I did I guess Tuesday yeah we'll stick with those two I had a guy comment on my concentration curls, a couple people. Of course, I did them wrong. I had one guy comment and say, I'm gonna, that's a good way to destroy your tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. My tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, the way I was doing those concentration curls. Are you out of your mind? If I tear my ligaments, tendons, and screw up my cartilage by doing that, I might as well sit in the house and do nothing. I'm not even doing anything. Where do these people come up with this stuff, man? I read that and I just kind of... I was like, what? I'm going to tear my ligaments, tendons, and, and screw up my cartilage. I ain't never heard such a thing, ever, by doing a simple concentration curl. Never heard nothing like that in my life. And then, of course, I got the range of motion police. Now you're moving too much and your arm's supposed to go straighter. And You know what happens when my arm goes straighter whenever I'm curling? I feel it more in my joint, in my forearm, and in my, where my arm bends. I don't feel it anymore in my bicep. That's what happens whenever I straighten my arm. You know why? Because it's a lot of wasted energy out there. There's nothing going on out here. You're not doing anything out here. The movement's in this area right here. Right here. That's my opinion. Well, that's actually fact, because I have proof. I can tell you that I feel it more in my joint right there where I bend and in my forearm if I go straighter. That's fact. Your body may be different. You can straighten your arms out till your elbows snap backwards. Go for it. Oh, boy. And then I just had a comment on my incline bench press. Where I did 355 or whatever it was. I don't even remember. 355, I think. Just this past Tuesday. And if you watch the videos and all that stuff, I said I wasn't feeling real strong anyway. So I'm lucky I went up to that weight. He's telling me only thing he got from the video and that, that's for anybody the only thing this guy got from the video was the incline is not at the proper height and yes it is if I go much higher then I'm gonna be working the front delt so my incline wasn't even set correctly number one 
Number two, I came out the hole. My butt came off and I came out, I came out the seat in the hole. Whatever you, know, you want to call it. Okay, yeah, I did come up off the bench. You know why? Because 355 pounds on the incline is heavy. That's why. And I still pressed it. I don't care if I came up so high that I stood up with it and shoulder pressed it and put it on the uprights. Guess what? I'm working at home. Alone. You do what you got to do to get that weight moved. I'm not in the gym with a dozen people hanging around like you, like this guy is. I went and looked. He does work out. Well, somebody actually works out that commented. <laughs> he works out and he looks like he's strong. He looks like he knows what he's talking about. And he does. I have nothing really against what he said. It's just, you know, he's in a gym environment. I'm at home. That 355 pounds has to make it. I don't have a choice. And then I had someone comment on the way I do Smith Machine skull crushers. You should use lighter weight. You should use an easy bar, a straight bar, or whatever, and blah, blah, blah. Now, I didn't check to see if they worked out or anything. No, I really don't care. <laughs> That's just an opinion. Uh, here's the thing. I've done skull crushers with straight bars, easy bars. I do them with dumbbells. The most effective method for doing a skull crusher, in my humble opinion, is the Smith machine. Because you don't get to cheat the weight up. You have to remain strict. Unless you move your body literally around on the pad. So you can put it into more of a pressing position instead of using all tricep. Go watch the way that I do them. I'm using my tricep. 85% of that movement is tricep. 10% is shoulder. 5% is chest. I'm just throwing those numbers out there, but that's roughly about how I feel. You use an easy bar barbell, even dumbbells, the way that some people use dumbbells. And most times, when you start going heavy, most times, when you start getting fatigued, it turns from a pivot, like this, how it's supposed to be, into more of a pivot, move, and press. And you end up pressing the weight, instead of using your triceps. 100%, I've seen it, 100 times. You wanna work your triceps, use the Smith machine. And I stand by that because I have experience. All these people must think that we just wake up one day and go in the gym and start throwing weights around. They must not know that we've experimented with things and maybe been there and done it a few times we're all going to do it differently all of us I do what I feel is effective for me you do what's effective for you in my textbook does everything I do look like it's from a textbook no I don't work out from a textbook I work out from me from my book. This is what well, this is what I go by. My body. <sighs> hey.
Hey Shadow, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Guess what? My shadow's incorrect. There's something wrong with my shadow. I'm not using correct shadow form. Uh, look at that range of motion. Stupid. Ridiculous. But my back, it doesn't matter about your back. It's still wrong. You don't walk until you get your form correct. I don't like that. Uh, God, you're an idiot. Okay, thanks. Trees, you're doing that wrong. You're treeing wrong. Tree, that limb is wrong. That's incorrect posture. Oh, my God. Uh, we're all going to die. You're affecting me. You're triggering me. You're tree iggering me. <laughs> tree -er. <sighs> I get it. Some people try to give you good advice. I get that. But it's the way you say it. It's the way you go about it. Be humble. Be meek. Be kind with your words. Except to these bugs that are going to attack me. Don't be kind. And then to the idiot trolls out there who are not trying to do anything except for troll la la and be little turd suckles. Well, I'm being a little turd suckle. I suck on turds. Well, I love turds. And I love sharing them with the internet. Here, have a turd. Uh, uh, I'm a turd. Mm. Just another day in the life of someone who posts videos online. <sighs> Some days I still would like to turn comments off. Some days. But then that keeps the good people from commenting. supposed to be able to interact with people most people don't know how to interact I watch videos all day long of people working out when I think well I'd do that a little different that's not exactly yeah, I see it you know pretty often and with people that I'm subscribed to I ain't gonna say nothing. Unless I see something truly just stupid. I mean, then I might say, dude, man, you might wanna... You might wanna reconsider that. <laughs> you know, if it's something just stupid. But I guess for the normal human being, anything we do is stupid, and so I guess they're gonna say something. Maybe that's what it is. But still, they say stupid things. Is that fly biting me? Probably. Anyway, enough on that. These little dorks get enough attention. This week has been a little, a eh, little lackluster. I'm not feeling quite as strong. My back's been a little bit more aggravated this week. Probably from doing them concentration curls. You know that. On the way to a starting 25 years before then. Anyway. Hey, dog. I'm glad you barked. <sighs> anyway, guys. Today is shoulder day. And I'm probably going to throw in just a little bit of legs a little bit more stimulation in the legs <sighs> of course we know Friday is deadlift day you know I have plans for the 460 from the floor but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I'm not exactly sure 
two things normally I don't care normally I just blow right through it but again my back is a little aggravated so we got that and then well, what else was it how you doing so we got the back problem and then if you keep up with the videos you know I remember my hand the callus issue I don't know who that was I probably should have got a video of him anyway my callus issue now I did peel most all the skin off so the loose skin, the loose callus wouldn't try to reattach. Which is what happened last week from the prior week. The callus was attaching again, but then my deadlift ripped it off and popped the loose skin. So now I kind of clipped away most of that skin. So I don't know if I want to continue to maybe let it heal and hold off on deadlifts or or what. I don't know. I don't usually let anything hold me back. But 460 is a goal that I've been working towards months, maybe a year, and I know I'm not going to make it to 500, so I'm, I'm going to make 460 my stopping point with my deadlifts. I feel like I'm at my, I feel like I'm at my point, and uh, I'm, I really do feel that way now. I think there comes a time when you got to draw the line, and I did that with my squats. I, I stopped it pretty much 365, and I can do a decent, decent rep with 365. Some days, some days not so much. Shoulder press, I think I'm stopping at 275 where I'm at. I don't see any reason to go any higher. So I feel like 460. That's real close to that crazy 500 pound goal that I set for myself a couple years ago. You know, as slowly as I'm making progress, on the deadlifts, I don't see any reason to keep going because it has been real slow. You know, a lot of people look at me and think, wow, you're strong. You know, yeah, but it's been a struggle. <laughs> My deadlifts have been a struggle. Anyone should be able to do 315. 225 should be a warm up. 315 shouldn't be much of anything at all for a guy. 405. A guy should be able to pull 405 for a couple of reps. So that's nothing. My humble opinion. That's nothing in the deadlift world. 500 though. That's when you're getting up into the into the big boy weights with 500. So as much as I've been struggling in the 400s, I don't see any need for me to go any higher. I don't think I'm going to risk getting hurt. Because if you use proper form, you're not really going to get hurt. That's one thing I don't hear too much about. Is my form on my deadlifts. I think I do them quite well for the style that I do. Nobody seems to really complain about those. Usually my bench press, people don't say anything about. 
but I guess little Jeffrey had something to say. So, anyway. We'll figure out, we'll figure out what's going on soon enough. Tomorrow's Friday, of course, so i got to figure out pretty soon what I'm wanting to do. <sighs> anyway, guys, I'm holding this phone long enough. And my shoulders that I complain about being horrible, that some people think I'm lying about. Uh, they're burning and making me want to uh, kind of scream. So, and speaking of that, the other little troll that I had earlier this week trying to call me out like I'm faking my bad my bad back. Do you know there's two reasons why people fake an injury? Maybe three reasons, maybe four. Workman's comp, money, disability, and being lazy. None of those things that I do. My back's been out 25 years. I've never once gotten disability, unemployment. I've never sat around. I've never gotten money. I've never hardly even gotten any care from anyone. These 25 years, it's hard to get anyone to even care that you're injured, much less get government assistance, disability, all that stuff. That's why you fake an injury. And I guess attention would go in there. And like I said, nobody gives me attention. <laughs> nobody cares my back is out. People say the dumbest things. I'll tell you what. To those of you that think I'm faking my injuries, I don't normally wish that kind of pain and discomfort on anyone. But if you tried to live one week with my bad back, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Just my bad back alone. You would be in the ER your first day. You wouldn't know what's going on. Your brain, you wouldn't know how to handle it. You wouldn't know how to handle the pain. When it feels like your bones need to break, or you have a nerve that needs to be severed. You got a problem. When you have wished that you could be paralyzed in hopes that you'd feel no pain from the waist down, from your back down, let's say, for 25 years, you got a, you got a problem. When you've wished to die, back whenever I was a religious man, I used to pray. Every day, every night. Please, God. Please. I, I used to pray. <laughs> I used to pray. Please, God. Please heal my back so I can be a good, strong husband, father, and Christian. Please, God. Please heal me up and let me be uh, whole again and normal. And I used to pray at all time like an idiot. And then I got to where I was praying, please God, kill me, get me out of my pain and my misery. Please send my wife a new husband and my kids a new, a new dad that's good and that's healthy and able to take care of them. I used to pray it every night, every day, all the time. All the time. You're in some bad places when you start praying that kind of stuff, guys. You're in some bad places. The reason that you wouldn't be able to last hardly a day with my problem is because you're not used to the pain. You're not used to dealing with it. When you've had this problem half of your life, I've had this problem half my life. I'm going to be 52 this year. I know how to deal with it. This everyday pain that's nauseating, that makes me want to rip my backbone out, I've dealt with this long. And then, you have the pains 
where it's completely out, you can't do anything. You can't get up and down off the toilet. You can't put your socks and shoes on. You can't hardly get in and out of the car without screaming. You can't breathe. You can't do anything. Been through it all. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of days. Guys, I've been through it. That's why I'm tough. Not physically tough, but mentally tough. I've been through it. And ain't none of it easy. So guys, having said that, we're going to finally end this walk and talk because, again, I'm tired. I'm holding this phone. I'm running out of breath. <laughs> Whew, I better watch it. I'm going to pull a ligament, tendon, or destroy my cartilage by holding this phone. Guys, if you stuck with me this long, you learned a little something about me. Okay. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to the body beat down because I'm one of the very few people on the internet and in real life that's real. What you see is what you get. I am not a show. I am not fake. You get what you get, guys. Get up, get out, get red, do it to it, and keep pushing. Keep doing well. We'll see y'all later. <sighs> Stupid tree. You're doing it all wrong. Uh, you're going to pull your bark if you don't watch it. <sighs> Stupid tree. Get up, get out, get red, and do it to it.